Hello, everybody, and welcome to RPG Exploration Society here on Saving Throw Show tonight. Uh, and for the next two weeks afterwards, we are want, uh, we're going to walk through uh, the brand new RPG for uh, The Few and the Cursed, a brand new RPG that's currently live on Kickstarter as of today, which you can check out that link by hitting exclamation point RPG ES uh, you, in the chat, and you can find out about the Kickstarter, and you can, get, you can start backing it right now. Uh, I'm Eric. I am kind of just introing and hosting before I pass it off to the rest of us. But before we get started with this RPG, why don't we introduce everyone that's at our table, starting with the person who's actually going to be running things tonight, Scott. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Scott Ewells. I am the creator of this RPG called Few and Cursed. Uh, I also created the base system that this was built from, which was Maximum Apocalypse, the RPG. Uh, and I do like game design stuff. That's what I do. That's where you'll find me doing. Fantastic. Uh, Eliza. <laughs> Eliza. <laughs> yeah, <please. laughs> um, hi, I'm Elisa Pearl. Uh, yeah, I'm excited to create a character today and dive into this weird West world. Um, I have the hat for it, so I'm, I'm ready. Let's do this. Fantastic. Randy. Yeah, if it's a apocalypse world, you know, you need a nice hat. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> uh, so, hey, everybody, I'm Randy Alvarenga. Uh, I'm super pumped to learn more about this and create some awesome characters to play together. And Ronald. Hi, folks. I'm Ronald Neely. Uh, and yeah, I am super excited to dive in uh, to the festivities this evening. Fantastic. Uh, I'm Eric, but I already said that. Uh, I'm here all the time. You probably recognize me. But uh, without further ado, let's take this off into some character creation and, and all of the, the goodness that is when this within this RPG. Scott, please take over. Sure. Uh, okay. So I guess the first thing to start off with is just talking about where we are so that we can understand what we're doing with our characters. We are currently playing in a game that takes place in like an alternate reality of like our current world. Somewhere in the 1840s, some kind of unknown, unspoken, mysterious, completely unsolved event occurred that caused all of the surface water to just disappear off the planet. So there's no more oceans, rivers, lakes, that kind of stuff. And in order to survive, people have to like go mine for that water. So water became the new gold. And that's just like the base of the setting that we're in but along with that in order to survive some people decided to start going into like deep religious stuff and find like artifacts and things and try to cling to them which led to the sort of formulation of this sort of dark energy that that affects people and corrupts them but that's also a mystery and some of your characters after you've created them may know more about that but if you're try to be a more normal character you probably have heard random sasquatchian legends oh over there there's a weird big hairy thing that people you know they don't go over into that area because there's a thing there um you know sometimes maybe when you were a kid growing up you were told like if you were bad the boogeyman would come for you and that kind of thing um only to be an adult and people say oh yeah no the boogeyman is real and you're like, well okay sure i guess i've always heard that um but that's sort of up to you and how you design your character uh, for whether or not you believe those things and how you react to those things. Uh, but essentially, it is currently roughly 1910, but we've been in a perpetual state of the Wild West for the last 70-ish years. And so all of your characters, unless you pick a certain type, is probably too young to know what it was like not living in a Wild Westian world. And so that's where we're starting off in this rpg and all the stuff that goes with that so think of like dusty trails and you know trains and things and that's what we are doing today and that's the world of the few and cursed which is a comic book series uh that we base this entire game off of so you can go find that there's a whole bunch of trade paperbacks uh there's like three of them <laughs> but uh and more coming up in fact at this moment while we're also in kickstarter uh issue number eight is in kickstarter for the comic series so that's another thing to note uh, cool. So in this game, you it's a D100 game. So everything that you do is going to be building off of trying to create uh, some D100 stats to roll as low as possible to make sure that you can succeed in the action. So the higher your stat, the more likely you are to get the job done. Uh, that's what we're that's our target for when we're building a character. And you're legitimately going to build 
the character. Because in this game, when you make the character, you make a series of choices. You choose a couple of archetypes that, that your character is sort of based around. These would be the main way that they survive, and it will affect their stats. Um, it will also affect their special abilities and the skills that they probably have access to have learned. And then you're going to choose a focus, which is how your character survives out here in this world, whether they forage for water or they uh, do bounty hunting and just try to get the bad guys, bring them in and get paid in water or whether they're just like really faithful and they, you know, attend church every Sunday and that kind of thing. And that's how they get through or whether they band together in communities and they like to be part of little settlements settlements. And every time a new settlement pops up, they move from settlement to settlement because that's sort of their thing. Um, however it is. And then you will, uh, your age will also affect these things because the older you are, the more likely it is that you've learned how to tie ropes and, you know, find water, you track things out there. Like you're looking for food, uh, just, just because you're old enough that you've done it so many times that you forgot what it was like, not knowing how to do that thing. Um, and then finally you'll get to choose some, apply some free points wherever you want to sort of work on your stats and pick them up. And then we'll go from there to do the rest of the stuff, but that's the first bit. And you're going to build your character based on those things. Um, so that's the first hurdle to tackle. Grab my little handy dandy notebook here. <laughs> um, so, uh, you guys have, uh, the the worksheet that I gave that will all be available to everyone who, you know, picks this up, it will be available online. We have one for Maximum Apocalypse as well. Like I said, it's just the system this is based on. Uh, so we just did the same thing here. Um, and that will help us because there is some math, but it's pretty basic math. It's like addition and subtraction. And then the hardest math you'll do is divide. Um, fortunately, that sheet that I gave you will do a lot of the division for us. And we'll just have to do some really basic division later on. Um, so if you can type, You'll be fine. Uh, cool. So I think that one thing to to consider when making characters is, is also to talk about the other people and kind of what they're thinking about what they kind of want to do with their character. There are archetypes, and I'll explain those as you talk, but I think maybe I'll turn the floor over to you guys to talk about the kinds of things you had in your mind for what you kind of wanted to see your character to do. Yeah, I mean, if no one else is, is leaving, like, I, I was really excited uh, to play. To I, I saw Scholar up there, and I don't know mm -hmm. what that really entails, but I sure. love playing, like, a studious, like, character. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, uh, someone wanting to know more about some of those relics. Maybe not necessarily the being cursed part, but, like, trying to dig into, like, what th these rumors that he's heard his whole life growing up. And yeah. so it's... I don't know what that would be. <laughs> no, no, that's right. That's exactly kind of what I was thinking. So then we can kind of build from that and, and look at what we've got going on for that sort of thing. So thank you. That was perfect. Cool. Um, I think I'm leaning towards kind of like a more quiet, brooding gunslinger type mm -hmm. who just kills monsters and doesn't ask questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She has definitely a strong mystique to her. She kind of comes and goes, kind of like the Witcher, but mm -hmm. cowgirl. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's like it's like you read the comic book. Uh, the main protagonist <laughs> in the main series is very much like that. She's a she's just a redheaded gunslinger who really doesn't doesn't really say much, but when she does, it's usually blank, 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 blank. <laughs> mm -hmm. Pew 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 pew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, I think uh, I kind of had the idea of a, an actual cowboy, not like the sort of like wild west version of a cowboy, but an actual like person that tends cattle and like in, like in some cases has to like move them to graze. And yeah, like, the idea, the idea that like, because this is a place that has no like freestanding water. Mm -hmm. the the notion of then having to like mobilize your herd of cattle like instead of like having a ranch is like a thing and so mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. somebody who's responsible for that sort of thing was, was an idea I, th I thought about like and and then having to deal with like in addition to having to deal with like all these big heads of cattle like 
the notion that you also have to deal with all of the terrible things that have occurred because of this like apocalyptic event and how right. that would that would affect having to take care of those cattle. So. Yeah. Yeah. Animals are not easy to take care of when you don't have a whole lot of water and like grass, you know, at hand. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a there's a whole archetype based on that same idea. So you're right on. Like you're right in the path for that. And I, I mean, there's a lot of ways I can go. But one of my the character that I've been thinking about is is my favorite Western character. It's it's the outlaw who's a screw up. It's the you know big mouth idiot who always screws up. Like that kind of guy. I love that. I love that guy in every Western because he's always like he walks in all tough and then just gets killed or beat up. And it's great. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah, I think we could pull that off. I think we can pull that off just fine. All right. So what I'm hearing then is I've got we've got uh, basically we've got a scholar, a gunslinger, a farmhand and an outlaw just right off the bat. That's what I'm hearing from you guys. Um, those are all archetypes. And they kind of work exactly as you'd expect them to um, by based on what you described, but also based on what they sound like. A farmhand obviously would be the person that deals with the animals. Uh, outlaw would be this bandit type guy that, you know, maybe maybe is or maybe not great at their job. Gunslinger is a gunslinger and a um, uh, scholar. Scholar. Yes, that's the harder one to pin down. Right. That's the mm -hmm. difficult one. But you you kind of hit it right on. So scholar is a little bit of a special character that that has a little slightly slightly different rules for their creation. It's almost exactly the same, except that they get some freedom on the skills that that the other characters don't. Um, so we'll we'll get to that. Uh, but so that would mean that based on this, you guys have chosen your sort of primary archetypes because that's what you're describing. So when it comes to your first choice, you will choose your primary archetype as those things. So scholar for you, um, farmhand for uh, you, Ronald, and then Gunslinger for Eliza, and then Eric, it would be Outlaw. Those would be the choices. <clears throat> and I have a little table that explains what pluses and minuses to the stats you have. Now, you have a baseline set of stats. It's you have The stats are Strength, Fortitude, Agility, Intelligence, Instinct, Charisma, Fighting Skill, Ballistic Skill, and Luck. I know they're, they're shortened for the worksheet, but that's what they are. Um, the strength is obviously the strength of the character. The fortitude is their sort of resilience at, at stuff. Um, agility is their quickness and movement and dexterity. Their intelligence, just what it sounds like and what it is in every other game. Uh, the instinct is essentially their intuition. So it's slightly different, sort of a wisdom, but kind of a little different. Uh, charisma is obviously the talking and also the animal stuff, like, like handling those guys. And then fighting skill is your punchy, kicky type things. Your ballistic skill is the shooty, aimy type things uh, separated from your dexterity. So you could have a high dexterity, but a really low ballistic skill and just, just be bad with those guns and stuff, but still be great at like wrangling and maybe with arrows, that kind of thing. And then luck sounds like a stat that maybe isn't important, but it actually plays a factor in a number of things that you will do. Uh, and it also determines how many times in a game you fail and you just want to go ahead and try to reroll that failure. Um, to mitigate like whether you're having a bad day or not. So um, those are things. So for uh, starting off with, since we started with Scholar, because uh, you're right to my right or left or whatever it is on everyone else's screen. Um, I'm not even sure what you look like on everyone else's screen, but uh, just going that way, your stats changes that you'd make would be a negative 10 to strength. Um, so you can plug that in. A negative five to your agility. Um, because you're going to be more intelligence based, a plus twenty to your intelligence, a plus fifteen to your instinct. What was my agility? Sorry. Uh, agility was minus five. Minus five to the agility. And we fortitude? skipped over fortitude. Oh, okay. We skipped that's over fortitude. Right, so right. not every stat will be affected by by this choice. Um, then a plus five to your charisma. Hey, cut up. I just want to make sure. Yep. And then a plus 10 to your luck. And that's where you are. Nice. Um, Ronald, you're the next on my screen uh, over here. So for a farmhand, you are going to actually be plus 5 to your strength. Plus 15 to your fortitude. You know, being out in the sun all the time and whatnot. Um, plus 10 to your agility. Because of that wrangling thing I mentioned before. Um 
minus 10 to your intelligence. That's rude. I know. Uh, minus 5 to your ballistic skill. Uh, and then and then this is where you get to, to soar a plus 20 to your luck. Yeah. You're that guy. Okay. Uh, and then, Aliza, for a gunslinger, you're minus 10 to your strength. Minus 10... And then a plus 15 to your agility. 15. A minus 5 oh, from your sorry. intelligence. Agility. I put it in the wrong one. Oh, yeah. No, I do it all the time when I'm making pre-gen right. characters. Um, and then a plus 5 to your instinct. Plus 5 to instincts. Okay. A plus 10 to your charisma. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, the plus 20 that, that I've mentioned before is in your ballistic skill. Because you're or... a gunslinger. Yeah. Okay. And then for the outlier, Eric, you are a plus 10 to your strength. Uh, based on the idea that you probably climb in through windows and rob yeah. people, that kind of thing. Yep. Uh, plus 20 to your agility. Crappy. Uh, minus 10 to your intelligence. Perfect. <laughs> a, a plus 15 to your charisma. The only way he survived this long. A plus five to your <laughs> ballistic skill and a minus five to your luck. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's your that's where your primary archetype that has the biggest swing over your stats. For the next choice you'll make will actually be the secondary archetype. That's actually now so the primary is the thing we just described how you generally go about it. Now the secondary archetype is the thing that you kind of want the character to also be able to do something that's in their background, maybe. Maybe they grew up in a household where like their dad was a doctor or their mom was a nurse or something, or a doctor, or maybe as a farmhand, they just were straight up always a farmhand. So it's both in both choices. Um, but the swing will be a little bit different. It won't be quite as high. There's only a, a plus 10, plus 5, and a minus 5 to the stats from that. Um, so it's not as impactful, but it does also affect some skill choices and, and later on when you develop the character abilities you have access to. So, um, so the other options that you guys have for these um, archetypes that you haven't seen yet are... Um, so we've, got, we've already covered the farmhand, the gunslinger, the outlaw, and the scholar. The other options are Assassin, Blacksmith, Curse Chaser, which might actually be, Elisa, that might be what you want because you were talking about ch hunt, chasing the monsters. Yeah, I was already um, kind of eyeing that one. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Priest and Minor are the other ones that we haven't covered. Oh, and Doctor. I almost forgot that one. Uh, the, the Doctor is a Doctor, you know. We could get that one. A miner is is a miner. They they do they're the ones that go down in the holes to get the water and bring them out. But they're also kind of experienced in like blowing things up and you know some some level of crafting. But they're usually fairly strong, um, fairly hardy people because they got to do all this carrying of things and digging. Uh, priests are very socially oriented and they do you know a lot of the preacher stuff. Um, and then. The curse chaser chases curses, right? They chase the monsters and the creatures. Assassins, you know, I think I think I, get, I think you guys get the picture on that one. Um, and so, yeah, so those are your other options that weren't already listed. But you could also be one of the others. Like if you wanted to also be like an outlaw uh, gunslinger, outlaw farmhand or something like that, those are also options. Um, and by mixing it up, you can also, and like I said, you can also do both. The only, the upside and downside to doing like being gunslinger, gunslinger, for example, would be that you would you would sort of double down on your gunslingerness. You'd probably have this bonus to your ballistic skill, um, but you're really that's the the upside. And then your um, some of your other choices will be affected by that. But the downside would be when you go to develop the character, you you only get to choose special abilities from mm -hmm. either the primary or secondary archetype. And so if you did the thing where you have both of them, while you're like super good at that thing, you won't really have any special abilities that aren't outside of the gunslinger. Uh, mm -hmm. those there just won't be options so you just won't be able to develop the character in any other way mm -hmm. so it's kind of up to you uh what you kind of think the character will do uh yeah i'm definitely gonna do curse chaser okay makes a lot of sense yeah i think i think minor just because i feel like that's probably what he started off doing and also like he probably learned explosives to, for blowing up banks in the in yeah. the like <laughs> 
Uh, scholars also know some stuff about uh, explosives and so do blacksmiths. So these are other things like those are other, also other options on that particular note. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, I like blacksmith a lot, but that's just a okay. personal thing. <laughs> blacksmith. So blacksmiths are the, the crafty characters. They're the ones that do a lot of, uh, you know, obviously like building of stuff. Um, but because of that, that's why they have like sort of access to the explodey thing. So one of the special abilities when you develop the character, one of the special abilities is literally I can just make dynamite on my turn in combat. I just make some dynamite. <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah. Cool. So I'm leaning either towards more scholar because I don't want him to be good at hunting these relics, right? Okay. Like he he wants to hunt relics. He hasn't sure. done it very much. Is okay. is the idea I have? Uh, okay. Uh, I I because in my head he's a younger adventurer. Like he wants okay. to get out and like see more stuff, like from behind, just like his studies. Mm -hmm. uh, so either that or maybe like he is a tinkerer kind of guy, and mm -hmm. that is sort of. Uh, something in his background but sure uh yeah I, I i think i might be leaning more to scholar scholar but i don't know okay we'll see we'll see how that plays out we'll yeah. see how that plays out and see if that's what you want to do um because there because like the tinker thing there's uh, options there with the blacksmith but also like even um like a doctor is fairly intelligent based as well so you know you can start getting into that level yeah, too. yeah that might make yeah. sense yeah um but okay we'll we'll leave it with scholar scholar for now we'll figure that out and then we, we maybe can adjust it, mm -hmm. you know, after we try it out. Um, let's see. I think I was leaning toward doing um, secondary outlaw with the idea that this herd that he has isn't his or oh. wasn't Ooh. his. Sure. But I think I'm actually going to I think I'm going to have that just be flavor. Um, well, there is there is a focus that we'll choose later, and one of them is banditry, so mm -hmm. that could be his focus as well. So he's like a okay. farmhand that also steals the cattle, like that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, th um, I think it was a, a, like at least at least in my head, it's sort of like this was an opportunity that that a, mm, either occurred okay. or like sure or um, was thrust upon him, and it's just kind of like like well this is what i'm doing now um okay and i like that that trope of uh in some some westerns where where a a um, an outlaw will end up the sheriff of a town because well the town doesn't have any other options and he ends up being good at it instead of <laughs> okay. in instead of being a sheriff he was good at being a, an actual cowboy a farm man sure um sure but i think for the actual secondary archetype i'm gonna go with blacksmith okay um, because it's lots of lots of blacksmiths going on. Yeah, um, is like is just something he needed to like needed to develop in order to kind of keep things going. There's always something that you there's always some sort of some mm -hmm. sort of bit of metal that needed to be bent or some sort sure. of like some sort of like gadgetry that needed to be like uh, dealt with. Um, and like, who better to take care of it than yourself than right. than rather than right. having somebody else on the payroll to do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah there's always like a spur or like something that goes wonky and you need to fix it yeah self-reliant that's that makes mm -hmm. sense i follow okay uh based on that then uh aliza went away so we'll we'll go with somebody else uh why don't we go to so eric you're also a blacksmith so eric and ronald are I, I think i think i think we'll do minor because i like the idea that yeah that he picked it up maybe in like a chain gang or, you know, some, some prison cop, like he, he didn't cause blacksmith is a trade whereas yeah. minor can be, <laughs> doesn't have to be. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Okay. Then, then we'll go with your uh, bonus stats kind of thing. Uh, then for a minor, you will add a plus five to strength, a plus 10 to fortitude. It's one of them that we skipped over before. And then a minus five to agility. Okay. I do I do really like I know they can't see my screen, but I like that when I put a minus, the number becomes red in the red. In the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. It was very fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those those red number negatives. Uh, cool. All right, then, Ronald, we'll go to you with the blacksmith. I thought if we were doing blacksmiths, we might as well do it all at once. But uh, now we'll just go to blacksmith as a blacksmith secondary for you. It would be a minus five to your fortitude. Um. 
and then a plus 10 to your uh, intelligence. And then a okay. plus five to your instinct. So I think that offset the intelligence loss you had before, right? Yes, yes, it did. Yeah. So that's that's a way that you do this kind of thing. You're like, oh, hey, well, maybe if I offset this, then I'm you know, back to normal. <laughs> um, I think then... I'm going to go doctor. Doctor? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think that makes... Uh... So the idea being, maybe that's sort of the trait he he had to take. Like his mm -hmm. family were doctors. He, that's sort of what he did. He studied hard and did it. But like really what he wants to be is like adventuring and like looking into these like things. Mm -hmm. Like there's this yeah. urge calling him to like learn more. So yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah. And that's uh, that would be great for like a scholarly person anyway. Like, you you know, have some kind of trade, but really it's a trade that it allots you a lot of time to sit around and read books and, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Um, people don't really get in the doctor's way. If he says he's busy, they just kind of go, OK, well, I'll come back later than Doc. Right. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> he's not respected though I, I i don't think anyone respects him as a doctor yet he's like <laughs> yeah. I, I, he's definitely younger i think like mm -hmm. early 20s kind of but yeah okay cool uh so then for you with a doctor it's a minus five to your strength and then Ooh, i am not strong <laughs> no and then a plus five to your intelligence and then a plus 10 to your instinct um and that that kind of makes some sense. So medicine is based on your intelligence, but crafting is based on your instinct. So we have this kind of like thing going on there. Uh, and then we we did lose we did lose Eliza, and I don't know if she is just invisible or be a cool effect if she were. Yeah, we lost her. I think yeah, I I don't know. She dropped out of that call. Possibly internet issues. We'll just have to move on and fill her in. Never oh, mind. Oh, there she is. Sorry. We were we were just having the discussion about what had happened to you and assumed yeah. that maybe a cursed monster had taken off. I you. think, yes, my internet was infected by a cursed monster. <laughs> uh, but I'm back. <laughs> she <laughs> took care of it. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, look. Uh, we just uh, we went over everyone else's uh, secondary stuff and told them their stats. So it's actually on to you. We were at ah. you at this point. That's why. I'm... All right. Yeah. Curse chaser for me. So curse chaser has a plus ten to their strength. Plus ten. Oh, I get back the strength that I lost. Yeah. Before. Yeah. You <laughs> offset it just like uh, Ronald offset his uh, his intelligence loss. Nice. Uh, a, a minus five to your charisma. charisma. Uh, getting back oh. to that broodiness. Uh huh. Uh huh. Love it. And then a and then a plus five to your ballistic skill. Five, all right. Yeah, sort of digging into that that gunslinger thing. Great, cool. Okay, now that you have chosen those those two things, that's basically your character's like primary way they do things, and then their background kind of feel. Um, and now you get to choose the what is called the survivor focus. This part is where, uh, in this cursed world, there are many ways to try to survive, as I described before. And so this is the way that now you start getting into, like, what does your character actually do? The options are banditry, bounty hunting, community, dark arts, faith, foraging, grit, soldiering, and treasure hunting. Um and so what that what that actually does what that means though is what's interesting is you could be an outlaw character that doesn't do banditry as your focus. So you don't like you could also be a farmhand that does do banditry, right? So these these focuses um, change up how your character like they could be something, but then that may not relate to what they do in this world. Um, but these focuses they will affect your stats. They will give you bonuses. No negatives for these guys. These guys are all pluses. Um, but they're pluses into certain stats because of the, the ones you would use for that thing. Um, and then they'll also give you a skill option and a special ability option we'll get later on. So uh, to describe them, banditry is obviously robbing trains and people and stuff. Uh, bounty hunting, like I said, is when like some cities will be like, hey, this guy's been robbing a bunch of stuff. This bandit over here has been doing these things. Uh, if somebody takes them out, dead or alive, we'll give you, you know, two gallons of water or whatever. Um Community is the person who likes to build up those groups and stay with them and you know work together in teams. Um, and then Dark Arts is the person who hunts the cursed things, 
but for the purpose expressly to try to gain the power from them. So to build themselves up, they like to, to, so to have the corruption because it gives them more power. Each cursed object secret, for those of you that are paying attention, each cursed object actually grants you some abilities before it actually turns you into a monster. You don't necessarily become a monster. You might just be really cool and can see in the dark or super fast or can fly or some other thing. Um, That's very intriguing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Faith is the, the churchgoer, like I mentioned before, but uh, that gives them some access to some greater inner power. Um, foraging is the person who's super good at finding water and you know keeping it and therefore usually pretty good. Uh, grit is the person who's just tough and just says, screw it. I don't care how hot it is out here or how strong that dude is. I'm just going to push through um, because it needs to be done. Soldiering is uh, there's a lot of mercenary actions that go on in this world. And so, you know, people will do whatever for water. And so soldiering is basically people who will be soldiers for money, right? For water. And then treasure hunting is the person who seeks out the, the cursed artifacts for the intent purpose of really just getting them and then checking them out, studying them, and then handing them off to a person who's willing to pay the most water for them, right? That's that person. So it's the it's the counterpoint to the dark arts person, though. Dark arts person wants it for themselves, and the treasure hunter wants it to sell it after they've kind of been like, hey, cool, I got the thing. I'm Indiana Jones. Now let me sell it to this guy who wants to do something with it. I don't care. It's not my problem anymore. He's going to give me a ton of water for it. Um, and so that, those are your options. Okay. I'm definitely going treasure hunting. <laughs> mm -hmm. It sounded like that's what you were describing when you were talking about your character. Yeah. I was tempted to go soldiering, but I think I got to go banditry because I think I got to mm -hmm. go full Tuco from Good, Bad, and the Ugly, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. And I think I think I'll actually go with foraging and just make the criminal thing just a part of my own backstory. Yeah, that um, can absolutely be flavor. There's no reason it can't be. So that's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. And I think the like I want to like I want to make it clear he is actually good at like keeping this herd alive, and I sure. think foraging would be like definitely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, a big part of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I have a question about yes. faith. Okay. Is it, uh, there are like made up, it's not like real world religions in this game. So right? yeah, kind of, there's, so there's not really enough of a society for like, there are some religions in the comic book. Um, but like they're, most of them are not real religions. Okay. Um, but there is still like this, this, because it's wild west, there's still like, you know christian preachers that's still kind of a thing um but they're not really prominent in the comics um but there's there's a couple in the chronicles of the Fiancres, a couple of other locations where you see other religions kind of being practiced um like in egypt there's like a group like a, a cult quote unquote that worships the sun god ra and like you see them and that's like a group um they're oh, obviously yeah. you know religious people um but yeah no in 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 the book we I, we sort of presented the idea of like, you know, making a fake religion because that's easiest, right? Yes. And it doesn't offend anybody and you're all good to go. Um, yeah. So, yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Then I'll do, I'll do faith. Okay. And I was looking at the, one of the, um, the pre-gen characters, the priest yeah. gunslinger. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to figure out the yeah what religion he is, but but yeah, I think I want the faith to be like, um, something that that does have to do with kind of Van Helsingy, like, mm -hmm. um, like we are the ones who are chosen to to like clean the earth of these cursed people or think something like that. That's what I'm right. thinking. Like that they firmly believe in the curse chasing. Right? Yeah, like that's their that's their faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that seems good to me. So, yeah. based on those things, we'll go we'll go in order. Treasure hunting. These are the bonuses you will get: plus five to your strength, Randy. Yes. Plus five <laughs> to your agility, and then plus ten to your intelligence. 
Yeah, making Mr. Smarty Pants over there. <laughs> All right, uh, Ronald, for the foraging, you will get a plus 10 to the fortitude. Okay. A plus 5 to your agility. And a plus 5 to your instinct. Neat. Uh, Eric, yours was um, banditry, yeah? Correct. All right, then you have a plus 10 to your agility. A plus 5 to your ballistic skill. Hmm. And a plus 5 to your luck. Ooh, that evens it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then for faith. Uh, faith is a plus 5 to your instinct. Plus five to your charisma, mm -hmm. and a I almost lost it. A plus ten to your luck. Ooh, finally got some luck. Yeah. All right. So you have this uh, baseline for your character so far, and now we get to talk about how old they are and what that means because the ages affect both the access to skills like i said and also the stats because the older you are the less uh strong you are essentially and the younger you are the dumber you are essentially uh but it's not really it's like it's it's because you're just not experienced right it's not like you're just really dumb you're just you just don't have the experience behind it um and so that kind of thing uh so being the age brackets are child which is 0 to 15-ish. Uh, youth is 16 to 29-ish. Middle is 30 to 45-ish. Uh, mature is 46 to 59-ish. And geriatric is just what we call anything above 60 because in a Wild West, if you're above 60, you probably are in that category of people that are you know, not as great as everyone else. Uh, but there's a, there's a plus and minus to your character's uh, stats based on these things. Um, think about how old you think the character is, and then we'll go from there. I'm feeling pretty strong about middle age. Okay. Yeah, I'm go with uh, middle age as well. Okay. I'm going youth. About, yeah, yeah, I was thinking like 28, like older yeah. end of that, but. But still in that category of youth. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> okay. I think I'm also landing on youth. Okay. And she's going to be on the younger side of that. So like 16. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So for you children out there. <laughs> you use uh you will have a minus five to your intelligence and a minus five to your instinct but you will have a plus five to your charisma and a plus five to your luck the uh middle-aged people it's super boring for you you're you balance out all the way so there are no changes to your stats you are as you are now. No change. Um, that's the middle one, obviously. <laughs> Just the right peak level for all of the things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's between 35, 30 and 45. So, you know, just kind of pick your age in that range. Um, you know, whatever you want it to be, that'll be fine. And now that you have these numbers, these four choices, you're now at the point where you get to just start allocating points. You have uh, 100 points that you have access to, to allocate at a one-to-one -one level. So if you want to put 20 in one thing and five in another thing, go for it. You have 100 points. Uh, the only caveat is that you can't put any more than 35 into one of the stats. So that's your, that's your maximum into any one stat. Um, and that's just to keep, that's to keep the numbers not being over like 100, right? Like to keep them lower than 100. Uh, because there are ways, there are ways of doing cer certain builds to push it up to that, like really close to the 100 mark. There's no more than, uh, you said 35 to, to yeah, no to more anyone. to any one stat. 
But you have a hundred to allocate however you want. Hmm. So many choices. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a, like. <laughs> it's a... This is the part where you get to like go. Okay, what am I good at? What am I bad at? How do I how do I correct this and get myself onto a good path where I sure I can see it? And fortunately, with a D100 system, it's pretty intuitive, right? If you have a 50 in something, you have a 50-50 chance of succeeding, um, right? It's pretty pretty intuitive at that point. I put a lot. I just want him to to hit what he shoots. So sure, sure. I now have a seventy five percent chance to hit. Yes, yeah. I put a bunch in my my ballistic skills and fight skills. There you go. He's, and then he's, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Ken. No, I was just gonna say it was it's ballistic and mostly instinct because he's the kind of guy. It's like I'm gonna shoot them before they become a problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, instinct plays a factor in some of your other things too, like dodging. So agility and instinct are what you use to dodge, essentially. I feel like he's good with a gun, he's lucky, and he's smart enough to get out of the way, and that's why he survived this long. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, 50... This is the, the slow, quiet part of the adventure yeah. where I have to fill in all this dead time with conversation. Also doing math. I'm going to just use my calculator. Yep, that, I, I, I oh, yeah. The uh, yeah, the, the 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 only thing that you actually really have to math is like 100 and then minus all the things you've thrown in. Right. That's mm -hmm. really the math part. Yeah. Uh, all the time. That's when I start the free point when I'm making pre-generated characters for stuff. I, I just do that for every one of them. I just go, OK, 100. Uh, we'll put 20 here, minus 20 and so on. I love this worksheet, though. Like, this is yeah. great. I love that you can just go through each one. Yeah. And have it all factored in. Yeah, it, it came about. So the story behind it is that uh, when I was doing the other game system, Maximum Apocalypse, I was making pre-generated characters. And I got real tired of, like, using scratch pe paper and stuff to kind of write things out. So I was like, how do I make just, like, I got to make something, some tool that I can use to just just sort of crank them out as fast as possible. And so I made this tool and then I went, you know what? I bet everyone else would also like this tool. Yeah, so, yes. so it's good. very it's very nice, especially in a D100 system where the numbers go wildly all over the place, because in like other mm -hmm. D100s, whenever I have to like make a handful of characters for a, a one shot or something, I'm like, oh, gosh, there's so so many numbers I have to write down. Yeah, right. right. And if that if that game comes into something like Call of Cthulhu where you have like a hundred skills to choose from, you're like, oh yeah. man, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the this has kept it simple, and I'm very thankful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are ten pre generated characters that everyone will get for backing the Kickstarter. That's the thing we set up, so I'm just throwing it out there to fill in time. But um, <laughs> we will throw uh, ten pre gen characters at everybody. Um, nice. as like you know part of the, the fulfillment um, we we have them made already actually so that we know which ones we're throwing out to people nice um, we also have the the ones that we're going to put in the book already made as well so that because we we're like we didn't want to duplicate and have like okay there's five in the book and then of the pregens you basically get those five plus five more we're like now nah, let's let's have those guys aside and then we'll we'll make some other ones for everyone else i think i am good yeah, I think I'm good too. What uh while the others are finishing up, uh what are Elisa, what are your stats? What do they look like? Okay, so um I have I'll go from highest to lowest. I have sure. an eighty-five in ballistic skills. I have a 60 in fight skills 
and then I have a 50 in agility, 50 in instinct, 40 in luck, 40 in charisma, and 35 in strength, 35 in fortitude, and then a 20 in intelligence. Okay. <laughs> I left it, left it there. I didn't touch intelligence. There's, there's, there's always one dumb stat, right? There's yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> she can be a little dumb, but she's like real good. She's real fast and shooty. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you really instincts. need to be smart when you can take Dang. something down at a long range, right? Like, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Randy? Uh, <clears throat> so I have a 25 in strength. I'm not strong. Uh, a 40 in fortitude, somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, a uh, agility of 45. Uh, intelligence of 75. Mm -hmm. Instinct of 45. Charisma of 40. Fists fighting, uh, 25, uh, shooting, 40, and then luck, 60. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Very lucky. Yeah. That's the only way he could survive because he can't, he can't <laughs> fight. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I think I'm happy with these stats. I got 45 for strength, 50 for fortitude, 50 for agility. 15 for intelligence, <laughs> uh, 70 for instinct, 25 charisma, 25 for fighting, 75 for ballistics, and 55 for luck. He doesn't nice. punch good, but he'll shoot somebody in the back. <laughs> the two of us together trying to solve anything is going to be hilarious. <laughs> I'll just keep shooting it. <laughs> Same. Same. Or hit it with something. I don't know. Okay. Um. So we have uh, we have this Randy's character being the really smart one to offset the fact that there are two characters are like eh. smart but inexperienced. That's, you know, <laughs> it'll be great. It'll be great. I mean, I don't even know if Eric's character can read, but who knows? No, uh, canonically, no. If if it's a choice, I will always choose to have my character not know how to read, because that's the best. Because because it's it personally, I'm like. The ability to read is such a new thing for humanity that everyone knows how to do it so well. Like 50, 100 years ago, barely anyone could read. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. That's fair. I think my gal knows how to read, but only like ancient texts. Mm. <laughs> like she was she trained on Latin. And, and <laughs> yeah, stuff like yeah. But like normal people stuff, she's like, oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What am I gonna read? All the all the taverns have signs. They, they mm -hmm. got beer mugs on them. And, you know. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You can usually tell like where the blacksmith is because you'll hear the sound. Right. You know, mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's fine. There's six buildings. I'll just go to each one until I find the one I want. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're at the wrong one, you could just ask them. Oh, hey, sorry, I was looking for the whatever, and uh, maybe you can point me in the right direction. Exactly. <laughs> I scroll down a little bit and I see the special stats, like how things yep. are put together. Yeah. Those are those are right below, and those are derived from the other stats. Um, the the sheet I gave you auto calculated a lot of it. There will be some Beautiful. things that we'll need to figure out, but those numbers that you're seeing, those should be the correct numbers. Amazing. Um, yeah. What is DC mod? So uh, that's a thing. Uh, DC mod. So, so DC stands for damage code. It's um, the damage code that you have when you, you know, attack things. So in this game, the way that the damage system works is we decided to go with this sort of scale that goes up or down depending on the situation. And so your weapons or your fists or whatever will have a base damage code. And then it's modified by like the situation or whatever. And the damage code modifier here that's mentioned is based on your size. So if you're mm. a bigger, heavier character, then you would do more damage with something like a knife or a hammer or a bow, um, you know, because it can allow for certain levels of strength to be used to, you know, pull it back farther and thus shoot harder, that kind of thing. And so that's what this that's referencing is the modifier that that affects the damage code. It would push it up one. Um, 
the damage codes are, are 1d4 is the first one that's light damage and then 2d4 is the second one and then it jumps up to 1d6 plus 3 for the third one and then 2d6 plus 3 and, it, and then goes to d8s and then to d10s and then it kind of st starts over with those numbers but adding the new numbers to it so it'll be like 2d10 plus 11 plus 1d4 hmm. um and so that's that's how we worked out like yeah, because it always sucks when you roll like you have like you've done something really cool and then you roll a one. I was like, oh, I did one damage. We were like, that shouldn't happen. And so what the way we did the scale was that if you've done something impressive or you got a critical or whatever, then your base damage will, even if you roll a one, will still be what would be the average damage for the thing below it. Um, and then your max damage will be a little higher. And and so you have this like thing where you know you want to try to push that up as much as possible. You want to try to uh you know call like take aim and called shot at somebody's head or something um or you know whatever the case is to modify your situation um That's yeah cool. cool i think i've got everything solid i think okay let's see uh do you want me to read them off yeah yeah what are what are your stats let's find out so uh 45 strength um uh 60 fortitude mm -hmm. Uh, 40 agility, uh, 40 int, mm -hmm. uh, 45 instinct, mm -hmm. 55 charisma, mm -hmm. um, 40 for fighting, uh, 40 for ballistics, and mm -hmm. 45 for luck. Okay. Uh, that, to me, sounds like the typical way that a farmhand ends up looking at the end. Um, farmhands are your kind of, like, overall kind of good at a little bit of everything kind of character um which which allows them to have more fluidity and like doing stuff right because they're going to be a little bit more um free they also get uh automatically get some cool things but we'll we'll cover that when we get to the special abilities um so now that we've done that now what you would do is you would do the the harder math the the division essentially that goes into figuring out your derived stats. So the build for the character is their strength plus fortitude, um, which like I said, is auto calculated. If that number is above 100, so we're at this blank DC mod, if your strength plus fortitude is above hundred, then you're a bigger character and you would have uh, a DC modifier. Um, is anyone over hundred? You are cool. So Ronald, uh, what is your number for your build? Uh, 105. 105. Just over that mark, you are a bigger character, so you're going to be slightly bigger than everyone else, thus making you slightly kind of stronger and hardier. Um, but what that also means is that you have a plus one to your damage code modifier, and that adjusts your damage code on your sort of melee weapons and stuff by one. Your fists will go up by one, so you'll do um, average damage instead of light damage with your fists and that kind of thing. Um, that also does mean, however that you will have a harder time crawling through small tunnels and uh, you will actually have to drink a little bit more water every day not to be dehydrated um so that's sort of a thing that will play a factor so there's a like a pro and con um on the one side you will just smash things really hard and then on the other side you have to drink more water right and that's sort of the thing but fortunately for your character you forage so that's the thing so you'll be like looking for water a lot more often um so that's fine uh, for your health points, which are your character's health points, that is your build essentially divided by five. Um, so I think, Ronald, you have probably 21, 20 or yep. 21. Yeah, 21. 21. So 20, Ronald being the biggest character has the most hit points out of everybody. So that would be, that's what we're targeting. Now, if you remember that the damage code for things is like 1d6 plus three, that can, your your hit points can go away relatively quickly. But that's where armor comes in, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so then your initiative is your agility plus your luck divided by 10. That'll be a number. It'll be a number like 9 or 4 or 10. And I kind of want to know what everyone's numbers are. Uh, so let me grab my little paper I was going to write it all down on. And I can't find my pen, so I'll grab another one. That's a Sharpie. All right. That's also a Sharpie. I have way too many Sharpies over here. Um, all right. So let me hear. Randy, what is your character's initiative score? 10.5. 10.5. Okay. So that uh, the 0.5 unfortunately rounds down. So yep. 10 is what the number is. Okay. Uh, cool. 
Uh, Ronald? Uh, 8.5. 8.5, okay. And then Elisa? 9. 9. And Eric? Another 10.5. 10, all right. Uh, so then, between Randy and Eric, which one of you has the highest agility? Uh, I have a 45. I have 50. Okay. So I will put a star there. So in the in the breakdown of like like initiative order, uh, Eric will Eric's character will go before Randy's character just because and he's my character will run. <laughs> <laughs> You'll not have run um, because I'll have shot three people already. <laughs> and we'll talk we'll talk a little bit more about initiative in in a moment. But that number is not the only number. It's actually uh, uh, that number minus five. Uh, and then if you had any more minus five again, but none of you are over 11 or none of you are 11 or over. So there will only be that extra number. Um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. This, we just need the big number for right now. Um, and then your corruption is the amount of dark energy you can take from cursed objects before you become some other monster thing. And on the actual character sheet, there's two sides. The front side is basically your entire character. And then the back side is the monster version of your character because in this game ah. being a monster doesn't make you an npc it doesn't mean you hand over your character sheet to the game master it means that you now have new special abilities new stats and you are probably a raging monster but you have some control over what you do and you can try to make a, a particular role to see if you can turn back into your human form and so you balance this game where you play this, like, do I want to go into my monster form? Would that help us out right now? Would being a giant raging snake really help in this particular situation? Or, you know, not. Um, and in the in the comic series in issues seven and eight, the eight being the Kickstarter right now, there is one of the primary characters who does turn into a monster from time to time. It's like her thing. Um, so that's sort of, think of it like Jekyll and Hyde kind of situation, only the Jekyll and Hyde can trade off a little bit more fluidly um cool. so that's your corruption that's how much you can take cursed objects will have a an amount of corruption and so you would just uh work on that now none of you were dark arts people so you won't really have the ability to offset that number by any way um so you just have to take whatever the corruption is um all right and then your salvage is your instinct plus luck divided by two and that number that that whatever that is for your character is the number that you would have to roll below to find things whenever you're looking around to find random stuff now i might as a game master i might just grant you stuff because i'm like yeah there's like you're in a place there's going to be bullets and you know books and stuff you're in a library of course there are books to find um but that role will also help determine whether when you're out in the wilderness you find random it's not the water that's different uh but finding like random things that people have dropped um maybe finding these component pieces which is what we use to craft everything and so that's what that number is for this is just makes it easy on me. You just make a roll and then we figure out how much stuff you found. And we don't have to worry too much about well, was there a loot drop? Was there not a loot drop? That kind of thing. Um, and then resilience is your strength and fortitude divided by two. That's how much of that like heat and you know, poison, maybe an explosion, that kind of stuff, how you can just soak that off and like walk away from it. Um, and then your resolve is your instinct plus your or your intelligence plus your instinct divided by two. That's your mental power. That's your that's how much you can shove off things like fear or, you know, turning back and forth into your monster version. That is what that number is for. And then your immunity is fortitude plus luck. That is for the diseases, cholera and the like, um, you know, in the world that you may have to deal with. There are also zombies, but we won't talk about them right now. Uh, so that's also a thing. This your immunity would come in and play a factor there. Uh, and then dodge is the other derived stat. And that's your agility plus instinct divided by two. And that number um, we will use essentially whenever there's combat situations or whatever reason you might need to dodge something. But in combat, it is always an opposed role unless somebody is surprised, right? Unless somebody is hiding from you and you didn't know that they were coming and then all of a sudden there they are and they're attacking you. You may not get to do a defensive action because you just didn't know they were there. Um, but usually you get to choose whether or not or you will be able to respond to it and then you have a choice and dodge is one of the choices um so everyone can dodge almost anything they can dodge bullets um you just can't like catch or parry bullets that's a little bit of a different story but you can still like go like oh no that guy's wanting to get to me i'm gonna start shifting and see if you shifted well enough that they missed right 
Um, so that is always a factor. So that number is is um, important in in many ways. So that's why it's it's just a derived stat rather than something else. Um, cool. So those are your that's your character stats. Those are all the stats. Um, skills don't affect the the numbers there. Uh, when you go to do a skill, that's what we're going to cover now. Uh, when you go to do a skill, the skills are based off of all of those stats, those base stats. And so when you go to do them, you're just going to try to roll underneath your stat number. Um, and the question is whether or not you're proficient in that skill. So then you have these other factors um, that will come into play. But you can essentially attempt any skill that you want in the game, and you're trying to roll under those numbers. Um, and then we go from there. So for skills, there are 25 skills. Um, the skills are not listed there. They're just open because we're just going to kind of go through them. Uh, but essentially, the skills are academics, which is the smart people skill. That's the catch-all for everything that's like thinking of stuff and things like that. And it plays, uh, it plays a role in also... Um, when you try to think of things, you can also add to your threshold ba based on your success on it. You're like, oh, I remember that I read in a book that blank, so therefore I get to add uh, such and such number to my threshold, that that number, my stat number, when I try to make that skill roll. Um, animal Ken is the skill for controlling animals, which includes writing them and or you know using them as to, to pull wagons and things like that, um, but also convincing them not to bite you in the wilderness, like that kind of thing. Uh, archery is for archery. Uh, athletics is the catch-all for all of the things you might do that involve running, jumping, and things like that. It does not involve throwing. That's just an agility stat roll to see if you hit your target. Um, the the distance doesn't really matter. There's a maximum distance you can throw things, but you just throw it, and then it's a question of whether or not you hit. Uh, blades is the skill for bl bladed things, things with blades on them. Um, brawl is the skill for punching and kicking stuff. Charm is the skill for convincing people of things uh, positively. So it's for negotiation and bluffing, but it's like in the end, your goal is to make them like you better. Um, and, and then there's another skill for other things later. Uh, clubs is the skill for all of the sort of blunt objects, uh, hammers and the like. Uh, command is a skill that you, it's a, it's a charisma based skill and it's used to give commands to other people. Each degree of success that you have on that, and I haven't covered those yet, we'll talk about that later, uh, will grant them that same bonus that you would get for, like in the case of academics, it'll push up their threshold so they can do better at that thing because you gave them the command to do it. Um, crafting is the skill that is used for making most things. Armor is a crafting. There's, there's three crafting skills, but armor... Uh, weapons that are generally like not guns, like all of the regular weapons, tomahawks, things like that are crafting. Um, and then like most of the items in the game, ropes, ponchos, things like that are all under crafting. Um, firearms is the skill for the shooty pew pews. Um, heavy weapons is a skill that is mostly not used a lot, but there are things like cannons and Gatling guns in this world. And that's what that skill is for. Um, interrogate is a skill that you use to push down the, your target's resolve number and you pushing it down eventually means that you can crack them with one of the other two skills, which is, um, charm is the other one. And then the second one is this one, which the next one, which is intimidate. That's the next one. So interrogate pushes down that, that resolve, that mental ability, and then you can crack them with the other one of the other ones. Uh, intimidate is the one for doing the same thing as charm. You want them to do a thing for you, but when it's all over, they don't like you because you were menacing and threatening. Um, lock pick is the skill for picking locks. Mechanics is the crafting skill related to things that move and have moving parts. So firearms fall under the mechanics, uh, clocks mechanics, train engines would be mechanics, that kind of thing. Medicine is the Healy skill. Um, Navigation is the skill to sort of recognize the terrain and move around it. It grants you some kind of bonuses uh, when you're doing things, but also helps you find stuff like, oh, I, you know, that's the fastest way over there, that kind of thing. Perception, or oh, sorry, I skipped palming. Palming is the ability to quick draw stuff, hide stuff on your person, or, you know, handle a card so that you win a card game, that kind of thing, if you were to cheat. Um, the perception skill is essentially awareness right it's the skill used for any time you want to look and see if you see something or hear something uh science is the skill the crafting skill related specifically to putting 
chemical things together or doing some engineering. It's the practical use of the academic stuff. So it's it's different than academics. You might know architecture, but science is the I'm going to build this thing this way skill. Um, stealth is the skill to be undetected. Survival is the skill that you use for finding water and foraging things. So that's the primary skill there. Uh, tracking is indicating, you know, where the target is gone, or especially if you're hunting them or if you're hunting food. And then the final skill on this list is wrangle, which is the ability to use ropes and nets to tangle up your opponents, but also whips. So bull whips and things fall under wrangle. So that was all of them. I just threw them at you really hard uh, just so you knew what they were, so you were aware of them. Um, but at the start here, we actually need to kind of go back to the age of your character because the first things you're going to choose is your age-based skill proficiencies. Um, and as a character who is younger, you only get access to one. And if you are middle-aged, you get access to two. But there's four skills that are the skills that we're talking about. They are crafting, perception, survival, and tracking. So based on those four options, Randy and Elisa, you will choose one of them. And Eric and Ronald, you will choose two of them. Crafting, perception, tracking, and survival? Yes. Those are the four options? Okay. Those are the four. I think I'm going to do... I mean, I will... Will I have a chance to choose some of these later? You you will have a chance to choose some of these later. Because we'll talk... We, we will have choices of skills based on your archetypes. Oh, okay. And so yeah, so that will be affected. This is just the other thing is too, if you have it and you choose it again later, it mm -hmm. just increases your proficiency and we'll cover out what that means mm -hmm. if we come to that. Okay. So you don't have to worry about like, okay, what if I choose perception and then I choose perception? I have to choose perception right. again. That's fine. There's a there's a okay. thing that happens. What happens. Nice. Um, but yeah, that'll be a thing. Okay. I wrote down as you were saying them, I wrote down just the ones that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. same <laughs> <laughs> which is a lot of them <laughs> but yeah there's um, a lot yeah but three of those four choices you said are ones that i'm interested in. so it's like sure. perception survival and tracking are on my list sure. so yeah i'm just gonna choose um i think either perception or tracking I'll uh well both of those will be available as choices for your archetypes later so you so either one. Oh, what about sur be able would survival be a an option later yes survival will also okay. be an option so i literally the curse, ch the curse chaser archetype uh has access to the perception survival and tracking skills so you will have a choice <laughs> for those later those three um okay. not everyone the gunslinger doesn't though the gunslinger only has uh actually has none of those ha, so okay yeah so that's a that's a thing so you might run into a place where you can't choose them um so i think i'll do perception your, then okay that wouldn't be bad to have more no, if i yeah definitely a useful one for sure okay did you have a question it sounded i did like <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then i was like no oh, i can ask well yeah i was just going to ask under the skills skill proficiencies chart on the worksheet do we put mm -hmm. So next to age, we'd put age. the one that we choose. You'd put the one you chose, yeah. Okay. The reason why there are four slots there is because if you were geriatric, you get you'd all have... four. Got it. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, cool. Yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I was going back and forth between perception and survival. I'm gonna mm -hmm. say survival, and the reason is this is a rough and tumble world. And a mm -hmm. doctor living like a family of like medicine people, they have to know how to survive. So <laughs> sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I'm gonna I'm leaning towards that. Yeah, I'm gonna go survive. Okay. Cool. I didn't have to choose. I chose both perception and survival because I'm an old <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> All I wish that's how it worked, Eric. I wish. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. I think I'll go with um, yeah, tracking and survival, I think. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, foragers are good at track or at the survival and then um, tracking the animals as they wander off and whatnot. Yeah, that totally tracks. Tracks. 
<laughs> uh, anyway, all right. So next, you all have access to choose two fighting skills. And by fighting skills, I mean combat skills. Um, the skills you would choose are archery. Like, these are the options, essentially. It's, it's basically all but... Um, heavy weapons that's not really one of the combat skills like i said it's not as useful uh it is it, certain avenues will act, give you access to it but in this case you're going to choose between archery blades brawl clubs firearms or wrangle um those are the ones that you're choosing oh my bixby picked up something um so you're going to be picking of those you get to choose two of them now there is one caveat if you don't feel like you want to choose two you can say, nope, I don't want to choose two. I only want to choose one or none. And then you will get two more choices in the later choices because we're going to go into like the primary archetype and secondary archetypes. Yes, mm -hmm. I see your face, Randy, because scholars are expressly the kind of people that do that sort of thing. <laughs> That's why I was bringing it up. Because uh, yeah. most people who play scholars, like I actually will take no combat skills and take two skill choices later. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. Uh, so yeah, you can you can opt to have less than two if you so choose. Can I do one? Yeah, can can yes, I do? You can I choose should, okay. one and then have one free one hanging out. Yeah. I'm doing firearms and wrangle. Yeah, that tracks. That makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna uh, do archery. Archery. Okay. Mm. Archery, archery is agility based. I should, probably should have told you what they're based on. Uh, archery and wrangle are both agility based. Okay. Blades, brawl, and clubs is fighting skill based, and firearms obviously is ballistic skill based. It's like like there's only two skills under fire uh, ballistic skill. It's firearms and heavy weapons. So, okay. Cool. Yeah. I think I'll take firearms and clubs. Okay. Hmm. So, mm -hmm. just to clarify, wrangle is mm -hmm. so wrangle is a is a combat. Uh, it is. Thing? So what wrangle is? Um, it's essentially in combat. It's you. It's kind of like ranged, bra uh, ranged uh, grappling essentially, because mm -hmm. you'd like throw a lasso around something and like you know try to to wrestle with it, but at a distance. Um, and so that's what the wrangle skill is for, or or using a whip to like strike them at a distance, but you know using that same sort of motion that you'd use for throwing a rope. Um, so the wrangle skill that is like ranged grappling essentially. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing you'd use to, to hog tie something too. Like if you caught like a pig, you would use the wrangle skill to like hog tie it. That kind in of. In that thing. case, I'm taking wrangle instead of clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, just to be, like just so just so there's a little bit little bit of variety i'll do uh mm -hmm. firearms and brawling um okay yeah that's fair give them the old one two you are also the You're bigger the one that has the stronger <laughs> punch so yeah that's that that's good that's a good place to be uh cool all right so now behind you <laughs> same and and like physically could hide behind him because you're also smaller than him so uh, uh, I, fig build... I figured eric and uh eric and randy would be like would would make use of me in, in, yeah in that yeah. regard uh, no the, you're bait the... for me i don't know <laughs> it, the build still number be... This, the build number also is is a number, and so that's how you would kind of get the idea. Like, if you're like sixty and they're like a hundred and five, then they're basically one and a half your size, right? That kind of thing. So you can kind of work that mm. out. Yeah. Um, so that that's run into we've run into with Maximum Apocalypse. We've had a couple of characters that I've seen in, at tables at conventions stuff. They're like one twenty five that somebody brought in. They're made. I'm like, cool. The the next person down is fifty. So you're like. <laughs> two and a half times that person so you know hey cool um but anyway uh now you get to choose skills based on your primary archetype your secondary archetype and your survival focus so this is more of the role play -y type stuff um i will say that while it is written in that the order of primary secondary and survival it actually often is a lot easier to start with the survival because you only get one and then work your way back up mm -hmm. um so for for you guys banditry 
uh, for you, Eric. Brandetree. The options are stealth and palming. Those are your two options. You get to choose one. You know I'm doing palming. Okay. <laughs> uh, for Aliza, your options for, for faith are crafting and charm. Those are your two options. Interesting. I guess I'll choose charm. Okay. Uh, for Ronald, foraging, your options are navigation and survival. Uh, and you can you can choose survival a second time if you want. That is mm -hmm. uh, and navigation is just sort of making your way around, like knowing it is it is knowing how to find things. And when we go into like the trail phases or third phases, the regular phase of the game where you're doing regular RPG stuff, there's combat phase, and then there's trail phase, and that's when you're traveling between locations. The navigation skill roll you roll at the beginning to make sure that you kept the path and didn't get lost on the way um and so it keeps you from like adding a day to the trip or whatever because you right, wandered well, off at some point all right i'll take navigation okay and then treasure hunting the options are academics or animal ken academics yeah <laughs> academics right on and now we jump back to your primary and secondary archetypes. So for the primary archetypes, who would like me to answer, uh, uh, give them the list of skills that fall under the category for the primary archetype that you would gain proficiencies in if you chose? You get to choose four of them and uh, or potentially five for Randy's case because he has extra an extra one floating around out there. Hit me. Yeah. Okay, so for a farmhand, your options your, of the from farmhand are athletics, animal ken, interrogation, intimidate, medicine, perception, survival, and wrangle. Those are the options. And you can choose four of them. Let me. And back to you just in case. So, Animal Ken, uh -huh. Athletics, uh -huh. Interrogate, uh -huh. Intimidation, mm -hmm. Medicine, yep. Perception, mm -hmm. uh, was Survival, uh -huh. and what am I missing? Wrangle. Got it. Okay. Well, and we're doing your... it. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. You can choose those, or do you want to hear the ones for um, your secondary? Your secondary was which one again? I forget. Uh, secondary was blacksmith. Blacksmith, yeah, yeah, the blacksmith ones. Do you want to hear those, or do you want to choose these and then come back to it? Um, choose these and come back to it. Okay. So, certainly doing animal kin for primary. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Um. Actually, Eric, were you, uh, what was your, like, your charisma was pretty high, yeah? My charisma? No. Hmm. No, it's Oh, was it bad. not? My yeah. bad. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, in that case. Because I was. It's tied for, for second to Lois, just above my intelligence. Aha, okay. <laughs> my fault. Uh, I was, I was, <laughs> I was basically going to pitch a, like, carrot versus stick between like the two of us if that was the case um <laughs> for one to do one to focus on intimidation and the other to focus on charm but um let's see uh so let's do perception and Uh, actually, we'll do. Um, so, just let's see. I'll do athletics, and mm -hmm. then. Uh, actually, yeah, I will do it. Intimidation. Okay. Very good. Very good. Because I'm, I'm large. Mm -hmm. Large. Cool. And then for blacksmith, there's going to be a, a different set of things, but there is an overlap. Blacksmiths also have access to animal ken. That's the skill that's overlapped. But here's the rest of blacksmiths. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have animal ken, clubs, crafting, 
heavy weapons. That's this angle that I was measuring about getting access to that. Uh, mm -hmm. Lock picking or lock pick mechanics, navigation, and science. Okay, so I'm going to say crafting. Mm -hmm. um, let's do. Uh, do lock pick. Okay. And let's see. And so the remainders were mechanics, science. And was there one more? Clubs and heavy clubs. Um, let's do. Let's do mechanics. Okay. All right. So that would be all of the slots that you have available for skills. Now, those are skill proficiencies. Those will will be mean that when you go to do them, they're you're proficient in them. So it'll just be like straight rolls. Uh, if you're not proficient in a skill when you go to try to do it, you can still do it. You'll just have disadvantage. Uh, if it's a skill that you're like your status super high in, you're probably still going to succeed at it because you're just that good. But that's a different story. Um, okay, so who wants to go next? All right, Randy. Um, as a scholar, mm -hmm. you have access to the following skills, and then I'll explain a little bit about why this list is much shorter than the other one. Uh, you have access to academics, mm -hmm. charm, perception, mechanics, navigation, and science. Mechanics, navigation, and science. Those yep. make sense. There's only six here, and there were eight on the other two lists that I provided. The reason is because the scholar can actually choose any skill they want multiple times. So you actually don't need to have more options. You can choose the same skill over and over again if you want, um, which is the another reason why a lot of scholar peoples will hold one off to the side because that means they get yet another choice. Um yeah, Ooh. <laughs> the power. <laughs> okay, um, it's the only it's the only archetype that gives you the ability to like choose the same skill multiple times. Essentially, yeah, yeah. So, for my extra one, I'm gonna do academic. Okay. Uh, you just go ahead and you can put that on the worksheet under the combat slot. So you just put it in there yeah. and then it's there. Yeah. Um. Then I'm also going to grab academics again <laughs> okay. uh, i'm smart I'm, I'm, I'm a smart boy uh you said ooh, oh yeah I, I was like there's no medicine but then doctor is its own thing that's right yeah it is um i will take navigation okay perception and science okay very good uh you also have by the way maxed out uh i don't know i guess you could do academics one more time i guess it's not quite maxed out it's close close to maxed out though um actually hmm. do actually I hold on to... how many times does it show up there is it three times right now it's just two it's academics okay. academics navigation science perception so no no i mean because you have academics didn't you choose academics for survival focus as well mm, uh for my oh you're right Boom! Yeah. I forgot so, it was there. No, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. I just want to make sure we'll get to we'll get to what happens when that when that happens later. Ooh. <laughs> but, uh, I'm just trying to check. You may be you may be pushing it to the point where you can't choose it anymore because you're just too good at it. <laughs> um, all right. And then for doctor, your options are academics, mm -hmm. athletics, charm, command, crafting, medicine, perception, and science. All right. Uh, definitely medicine, mm -hmm. definitely perception, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe science. Yeah, let's do science. Okay. Is that science twice then? Yep. Is that too much too? <laughs> uh, no. So you already chose science, so you, you actually can't choose it again okay. in this particular case because you already have it from it. something else. And it's not scholar. If you had it from scholar, then yes, you could choose it again, but it's from Understood. Understood. So, so medicine, perception, and what were... Uh, 
medicine, perception, charm, and command. Charm or command. Yep. Neither of those sound like this guy. Uh, Let's go charm. Okay. You might need to sweet talk somebody every now and then. Yeah. Or at least try to. (laughs) At least, or maybe navigate the the society of people that usually associate with doctors, right? Yeah. A little bedside manner. Mm, Yeah. You know, just a little bit, like just an (laughs) inch of it. Uh, Cool. All right. So then who wants to go next? That's why I decided not to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go next. Okay. All right. So as an outlaw, here's your list. Animal Ken, Athletics, Charm, Interrogation, Interrogate, uh, Lockpick, Palming, Perception, and Stealth. And I can take palming more than once, so I'm definitely. You can if it came from yeah from somewhere else, right? If it came, yeah, from, I got it like, from survival. Yep. Yeah, I think lockpick for sure. Mm-hmm. Perception, great. Um, and then, what were, what were some of the other ones? Uh, animal can athletics, uh, charm, interrogation. Did you stealth yet? Uh, I haven't. I should choose stealth. You should choose stealth. Yeah. So, so we'll go lock picking, perception, palming, and stealth. Very good. And then your other one was a minor. So miners have this list: athletics, blades, crafting, heavy weapons, intimidate, medicine, navigation, and science. Science being the one you need to make the things that blow up, by the way. Um, I think my background in the minor has given me a little bit of athletics. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew a thing or two about heavy weapons. I was hoping I would get the opportunity to do it. And then navigation. Okay. All right. I don't know if there'll so be an opportunity be- to do anything with like a Gatling gun, but boy, that would be fun. Well, now that it's on the, now it's on the table, <laughs> you know, might be a thing. <laughs> uh, we still have two more weeks of this, right? So who knows what may happen? All right, Elisa, it's your turn, and we're going to talk right. about the gunslinger and Chris Chaser. Okay. As a gunslinger, <clears throat> here is your list: charm, command, crafting, heavy weapons. Interrogation, lockpick, palming, and wrangle. Wrangle. Okay, definitely want palming. Mm-hmm. Palming. Um, then you also said command, which I hadn't written down before. Heavy weapons. You said interrogate, yeah? Yeah. I'll take that one. Okay. That was on my list before. So interrogate. Can I hear the the secondary ones now too? Sure. We can jump right into that. Uh, the secondary, the curse chaser, is athletics, blades, intimidate, palming, perception, stealth, survival, and tracking. Ooh, yes. Okay, good, good, good. Definitely gonna take stealth and survival. Else? Oh, oh, wait. Stealth survival and tracking. Yeah. Tracking. Okay. If you took all, then... all three from that, then those would be all three of your options from Curse Chaser. Yes, great. Yeah. Okay. So then going back up to primary yep. to Gunslinger. Um, Stealth survival and tracking. So that leaves. Another perception. Oh, athletics. I did want to get some of that. Mm. Athletics. I already have wrangle once. I don't think I want heavy weapons or command. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll let her grow into that stuff, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'll do athletics. Athletics. And for my last one. 
mm, intimidate. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I don't know if I told everyone at home. I said you get to choose four from the primary, but you get to choose three from the secondary. I'm just announcing that because I wasn't sure if I actually mm-hmm. expressly said that. Um, so that's where we're at. So you get to choose like, you know, a couple of different things from each of those categories, and then you can work out that what your character looks like. All right. So those all that's all your skills. Those are your skills. And when we Sweet. put them on the character sheet, the uh, you have your the way that it's laid out is the stats will be at top, and then they'll cascade down from the stats that they're related to. So you'll know where they fall. So you know when you're doing a I mean, some of them are pretty simple, right? Charm probably falls under charisma. That was pretty obvious, right? Like firearms mm-hmm. falls under ballistic skill. But some of the other ones might be a little questionable, like is medicine under instinct or intelligence, right? That kind mm-hmm. of thing. That'll be clarified um, there. Um, but yeah, you'll you'll get to you know see how that works out. But essentially, you just roll for the stat to succeed on it or not. Um, and Can then I this ask a quick question: yeah. Yeah. If my academics is too high, because I know you mm-hmm. said it might be on the line. No. So what I meant by that is there are three. There are three. Um, there are four levels of proficiency. Um, technically five. You're not, either not proficient in something, or you're proficient in something. But then when you're proficient in it, you can be proficient, skilled, trained, or mastered. That's all I meant. Okay. Um, if you're if you're mastered at it, then you can't go any higher. Got it. Yeah. So that's what I meant. Not that you would be like your your stat would be too high. I actually don't care if you push the stat over 100 or not, because you can still fail with a zero, 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 a critical failure um, that what that will do is that'll just continually increase the um, the other thresholds for success. And so that would make you just super good at that thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I at this point, I don't care if it pushes it over the 100 or not. I only meant that you can't go above mastered. So if you had it four times, for example, you really can't. You can't because you wouldn't be able to do anything with that. So Got that's it. all. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so now we get to do the cool, interesting, fun bit. You're going to get to choose your special abilities for your character. You get one from the primary archetype to start off with. And then with character development, you can choose from the secondary archetype. But at the beginning, you choose one from your primary archetype because that is what you do, right? Um, and then you get to choose one from your survival focus, because, again, that is what you do to survive in this world. Um, and there's really only one. So you get that one because that's what you do here. Um, there might be more later. I'm just future proofing. Right. But you would have that option now. You get the one from now. And then you get to choose a bloodline ability. And this is just something that comes from your family's background, something that affects you that is just because it is inherently you. And it has nothing to do with anything else that we've done so far. So this is the point where you get to do something <coughs> cool with your character. And if there's something that you can think of that isn't necessarily on the list, we can work that out as how that would actually affect. So that's where you get to do the cool thing of like, I have this crazy special ability I thought up, right? Um, but for your characters, um, if I just go in the order in which I'm looking at people, um, Randy, your character as a um, scholar would have the option. You have uh, eight options. You are there are educated, which means you grant yourself advantage on academics or science roles, depending on which one you've decided to apply it to. Uh, inventive, meaning that you have uh, advantage on science skill roles whenever you're crafting things that are sciencey related. Um, well-traveled, you have advantage on charm rolls just because you know about a lot of different cultures and stuff. Uh, homemade bullets, you exchange these component pieces that we have in the universe to create bullets that do slightly more damage than regular bullets because you made them yourself. Uh, snake oil, where same thing, you exchange some component pieces to craft a serum that heals for one damage or decreases infections. Um you can make it in combat even, and it will uh, apply to unconscious characters. It will cause them to like wake up. Um, you can do. You can have the ability called blow darts, where you use a science skill instead of throwing things. You use science instead, and then you would, you know, blow dart things, and you could, you know, drop them. But if it could be something that has snake oil in it to heal them, or it could be something that's explosive. It's up to you. But you essentially use blow darts. Uh, architecture, where you have uh, you have advantage. Um, on any kind of like roles that you do to like rebuild barriers and that kind of stuff um, or to, or opposite to target them uh, to destroy them because you want to get around them right uh, and then useful knowledge is the last option academic school skills skill roles when you do them instead of granting plus five per degree of success to the threshold of whatever it is you're about to do it actually grants a plus 10 per degree of success which means that if you get like 
if you roll like a really low number, like a two, you're going to give yourself 30 to the threshold for whatever your next action is. Got it. Um, and and, and like, did I you say what that. educated, the difference with educated is there? Uh, you get to choose either academics or science, and that will always be an advantage. Got it. I'm, I think I'm going to go educated, and I think I'm going to go academics. <laughs> okay, you'll have academics advantage. You'll be that smart kid. Cool. Yeah. All right, that's it. That's he all he has there. studied for this adventure, you guys. <laughs> yeah, right. Your character's the name is Um, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be. He wants to be. Let's see. Okay, uh, let's go to Ronald. Ronald, you play a farmhand. Farmhand, as a farmhand, you actually get um, some options here. And then the last one I will share with you will be a little bit more complicated because it's the really complex one. Um, okay. But we'll, it's the last one, so we'll get to it when we get to it. Uh, first one is Rifleman. You gain proficiency in firearms uh, whenever you're using a rifle. You just have it, you know, have that. If you already have firearms, then you gain advantage when you're using like rifles and stuff. Um, you're just used to using them to, you know, take things down in the rain, out out in the wilderness when you're walking around. So, uh, next one is called Rope Trick. Wrangle is always at advantage because you know ropes. Um, Vigilant is uh that's the next one it's perception skill is always an advantage because you're always watching your flock you're always watching the herd right you're always keeping an eye out for coyotes that kind of thing um natural remedies you actually can um when you do healing stuff there's usually an associated cost from component pieces because you got to wrap up the wounds and things you actually reduce that by quite a bit so you may not even have to use anything because you just know stuff like oh if i put mud on it it's fine i like that kind of thing um extra hand and that means when you whenever you do teamwork skill roles you'll actually just you'll do better at helping people and so they when you help somebody you usually grant a, a bonus to their threshold to help them succeed in your case it will actually be higher so it's double that number so it's usually five per degree of success it's 10 for somebody with extra hand uh cattle driver animal ken is always an advantage and if you have a loyal animal a loyal companion which i will cover in a little bit then you actually increase your degrees of success whenever you're doing something with them so whatever it is you're doing especially if you're trying to like do any kind of like chase things or whatever you actually automatically have one degree of success and then you can increase that based on what you do um and then you rancher experience that's you gain advantage on survival skill rolls because you know how to forage and camp uh with when you're traveling with the, the flock and then finally, loyal companion, um, you gain an animal companion. And the animal companion is pretty pretty cool. Uh, if they die, however, you get disadvantaged to all of your roles and your damage code goes down to everything you do because you're so distraught because of the loss of this character, this this loyal companion. But you can eventually find a new one because this is your special ability. So you, you and I would work out a story on how you did that. Um, but the other thing is the loyal companion is essentially a second character it has its own initiative and it has its own stats and you can give it commands and it will loyally follow them it is your loyal follower right um the loyal companions can be dogs donkeys like right on right on the list dog donkeys and horses are automatically approved other kinds of things would be like crows elks bears uh, wolves, that kind of stuff, but that would be something you'd have to work out with the the game master, right? To be like, hey, I want to, I want to have a wolf. I'm like, okay, well, we have to talk about that because wolves are pretty dangerous. So, um, you know, do I do I want to allow you a wolf because it's going to like mow through all of these NPC things I throw at you? Uh, will it increase my challenges that I have to throw at you? Then yeah. Um, but your little commanding, you can give them a command, and there's just a list of commands like attack, go, fetch, use a skill, stay, speak, things like that. And they will just do them on their turn um and like yeah like i said attack is one of them so you can be like yo go kick that guy or go bite that guy or go chase that thing and it will just go do it because it is your loyal companion but it will do it on its turn and it will essentially have its own turn um so that's loyal companion that's the complex one uh, but mm -hmm. it isn't necessarily the choice everyone makes so i just wanted to that's so complex i put it at the bottom um, gotcha gotcha yeah. and although i desperately want a loyal like a loyal animal companion <laughs> i'm probably gonna skip it just because like it's it, it is like in game logic it would be another another mouth to feed mm -hmm. uh, for the character and he that is that is the downside yeah yeah um, and then out of game is just it more stuff to more stuff to have to 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 tinker with sure um, 
Um, let's see. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to go with extra hand. Okay. Cool. All right. So when uh, when you're doing teamwork things, then you will get ten per degree of success instead of five. So when you work with other people on stuff, you'll you'd be helping them a lot better. Cool. All right then. All right. Uh, then, Eliza, let's talk about the Gunslinger. All right. Gunslinger options are hollow points. Uh, you will choose a favored weapon, and you increase the damage code two when using this favored weapon. The caveat is you have disadvantage on any other weapon that you try to mm -hmm. use. Is there just not, it's not your favorite weapon? Um, run and, or hit and run. That's the next ability. You can take aim as a free action once during your turn. So on your turn in combat, you'll have two complex actions you can do. Taking aim is a complex action. But if you have that one, it is not as a free action. You can just do it and then still do other stuff. That's why it's called mm -hmm. hit You can move or whatever other thing you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, trigger happy, you actually gain the multi-attack ability when you have a revolver in your hand, um, meaning that most people don't get to attack twice on their turn unless they have the multi-attack, and that would be what you'd have. You have multi-attack. Um, repeating rifles also have multi-attack, but none of the other weapons do um uh tactical leadership is the next one uh you have the command skill is always at advantage poker face uh if you fail a resolve roll you can reroll it once without having to use any of your luck points uh, but you have to accept the um result uh, mm -hmm. um, yes yeah okay. but you can also use luck and then be like well that didn't work i'm gonna go ahead and just use this special ability and see if that uh -huh. works cool um, so you can do the luck first if you wanted to mm -hmm. um yeah uh lasso is the next one the wrangle skill is always at advantage mm -hmm. focus shot is the next one uh called shots with the with a firearms or heavy weapons thing is at advantage which negates the disadvantage that you get for trying to call a shot because you're making it harder to hit the target you're hitting a specific target mm -hmm. it offsets that it essentially makes it just a normal thing that you do um, and then guns blazing is the final option. You gain multi tech with any handgun, mm -hmm. however, or with any, yeah, with any handgun. However, um, if you fail, then we have to roll a D100. If it's below 25, then you hit an ally. Oh, no, <laughs> just like, <laughs> you, <he's> just like <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Okay. And a question about aim. What advantage does it give you to aim? Taking or, aim yeah. grants you advantage on the next attack action you do. Okay. Um, so that would so basically the free the hit and run allows you to basically have advantage on your shots every time because you have that as a free action. Okay. So <laughs> so I'm thinking that one, there's a second one in there. What was the one right after that one? Trigger happy. Those are the multi attack with revolvers. Yeah. Multi attack with with revolvers. Revolvers, yeah. Because the revolvers, there are other types of guns essentially. And so uh, revolver types. Like a peacemaker is the most common handgun. And so yeah, that would be you'd have multi attack with that. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm gonna do trigger happy. Okay. I want multi attacks. You want multi attack. You want to be able to go pew, pew, right? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will I will spare my allies. The guns blazing because that was tempting. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, the other thing is too, if you're dual wielding, right? Um, and then you you get that with the dual wielding as well. So you could be like shooting four times and stuff, but it's like, uh oh. Um, <laughs> uh, but but then you have this like loose fire just all over the place, right? That's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, Eric, as an outlaw, these are your options to choose from. Uh, Robin Hood. Your checkered past makes you unpredictable, which grants you advantage on intimidate or interrogate skill rolls. You have to choose one. Um, killing blow. When you are unseen and within close range, you do maximum damage with whatever your weapon is. If it kills the target, then the other enemies, if it has any allies, become unnerved. Because, you know, what the hell just happened? Uh, sneaky. Your stealth is always at advantage. Cutthroat. The blade skill is always at advantage. Slick dealer, uh, when when you're successful on a charm skill roll, you gain advantage on all subsequent charm skill roll skill rolls versus that target. Um, 
until you fail eventually. Um, but you'll have advantage up until that point. Uh, fastest hands in the West. Your initiative is increased by one. Uh, and then you gain uh, the when you go to quick draw stuff, you usually need two degrees of success to quick draw. In your case, you will only need one because you're just so dang fast. Uh, pay dirt. Uh, when you are salvaging or using the palming skill to steal things from people, you will gain an additional item or an additional 1d4. Uh, when you do that, because you're just so good that you can steal two things at once, essentially. Um, or secret pocket. You have a pocket that holds a light or average damaged handgun or knife, uh, and or or ten ammunition, however you want to play it. Uh, that can only be found if someone gets three degrees of success on a perception skill roll, which is like one quarter of their stat value. Um, and NPCs generally never ever get three degrees of success, so most of the time you can just roll around without having to worry about somebody finding your weapon unless i as the storyteller say no that's not um and that's it those are your those are your options this is some good ones i think i'm going fastest hands in the west because i think he survived by killing people before they had a chance to react sure what that will mean then is that pushes your initiative actually up to 11 which means you do actually push that threshold where you get three turns in a combat round but we'll get into that later um, but we'll just make a note of that somewhere because I don't think you can put it in because the sheet auto calculated. So we'll have to just keep track of that. 11. Cool. All right. Them's your special abilities based on your archetype. Now we talk about the one you get. You don't get a choice. You just get one from your survival focus. Um, because I'm going to go in alphabetical order of these things. Eric, your uh, special ability you gain from being a bandit is ambush sense. And what that means is you cannot be surprised and you are always able to make defensive actions even against unseen targets. Um, so no one can sneak up on you and just shank you in the back. You always like, even right before the shank, you're like, wait a minute, somebody's there. Yeah. And that's, that's, it. that's, he's just like this twitchy guy living out in the West, murdering to survive. <laughs> For uh, Aliza, faith, your ability is pious. Hmm. What that is, is that damage from any successful attacks against you is reduced by luck points as long as you have no corruption. So as long as you haven't taken any of those cursed objects and have those abilities, you will reduce your damage by your luck points. Your luck points is your luck divided by 10, so in your case, 4. So you reduce all damage you take by 4. Um, oh. except for except for resilience damage like things like heat it doesn't affect that but like somebody shooting at you or trying to stab you you automatically knock the damage they do down by four nice um, but that will change is if it... you use your luck points then that will obviously oh go down. yeah got yeah. it so it's 10 percent of your current luck points basically basically okay yeah 10 percent. cool yep uh all right if you do gain any corruption you automatically negate this effect all right i have to stay pious it's actually it's actually one it re, it re decreases that number by one per point of corruption you have but like you only have four and almost every cursed object is going to have more than four corruption gotcha. so it's, just gonna, it's just gonna go away mm -hmm. um all right for forging uh ronald you are a trail expert you have advantage on the survival skill roll whenever you are on a trail but also to that when you are forging for water you gain two water units per degree of success instead of one. Everyone else only gains one when they're forging. You gain two because you're just that good at finding water. Um, so that's the notes there. The trail expert. And then treasure hunting. Mm -hmm. Randy, you ready for this? Yeah. Dark knowledge. You Ooh. always have advantage on academic skill rolls that involve cursed objects or cursed monsters, regardless of whether or not you're proficient in academics. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you're just that I, guy who knows. I so read much. it in a book somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think you also already have advantage on academic rolls, right? Yes. So that's actually a situation we call double advantage. There's actually a way to have three advantage or three disadvantage on rolls, and that will affect it and how it goes out. So you have you'll have double advantage on academic rolls when it involves cursed objects or cursed creatures. It's like super good at it. And that is that is your survival focus abilities. Now 
is the time to choose a bloodline. There are 10 options that I have listed. Of those options, there's one that's called Bizarre Mutation, and then there's a whole nother list of mutations you might have, like you may have reptilian skin, which allows you to like shake off heat and like water requirements. So you might be have a tail, which grants you like advantage on ath athletic stuff. Um, but you can also tell me something that you were thinking of if you want to do create your own and that's sort of we can work that out and how that would look um this is your bloodline thing uh, but your options are midas touch a person who gains uh extra water whenever they're negotiating with people or using a charm roll to, uh, to convince people to give them up give up water um thick-headed your resolve rolls are always at advantage uh uncanny abilities you actually gain two more skills or increase the proficiency of two skills um moving target which is uh, you add one to your initiative and plus five to your dodge because you're just fast uh water retention you cannot become exhausted or dehydrated uh if you've consumed at least one water unit since the last time you slept so you only need to drink one water and that'll basically get you through the day um bizarre mutation which is the thing where you go down the other list and find out if you have some kind of mutation um oxen build which is plus 50 to your build, which then would put you into another category and thus make you harder, or you slam things harder and you're stronger and stuff. Uh, rather that you have like more health points. Um, born lucky, gain two more luck points. You just have two more luck points. Um, so your luck is, like I said, the luck points are actually your luck stat divided by 10. Um, so then the, this would just give you two more, whatever that number is, plus two, right? Uh, fortitude, all your resilience rolls have advantage. And incorruptible, you gain three to your corruption threshold. So your corruption threshold is whatever the number is, plus three. Those are the list uh, of options. I think my guy was definitely born lucky. That's the only way he survived. Okay. So your current luck, uh, your what is your luck right now? Uh, it, so my luck is 55, so I would have five luck points, so it would go up to seven. Right. Seven luck points, exactly. And that's the number of times in a game that you can go, I think I want to re-roll because I don't want this result, right? Yeah, like I don't want this failure. Yeah. Because um, it applies to failures. If you succeed, you're like, well, I'll just take this success. Why not? Um, yeah, cool. Question. In mm -hmm. this world, mm -hmm. is a mutation different from the monster stuff? It is. It is. Mutation is more like a physical thing. Um, that just comes from like your bloodline, right? It comes from your family's history. Um, and it may just be an adaptation to the environment. Um, so for example, one of them is like big brain. You actually get plus 10 to your intelligence because you just have a literally bigger brain. Um, it doesn't relate to any cursed things. It's just, you just have a bigger brain. Or um, maybe the another one is premonitions. Maybe you're a little psychic. And so you actually have... Um, uh, you can always take the dodge defense. It's very similar to the ambush sense. You just you just have this like psychic thing, spidey sense essentially. Um, yeah, it's not it's not related to the cursed monsters or the cursed objects. Okay, I'm deciding between uncanny and mutation. Okay, I think I'm gonna think for a little bit more. Sure, I will say I'm not gonna pick it, but that the the psychic thing is my favorite thing. Like <laughs> I. I it doesn't go with this character, so I can't. But like, <laughs> if that's cool, and now I want to make another character t again. Yeah. Um, well, there, but, there's also there's also telepathy where you can send messages to people over distance. Yeah, oh my just God. Your mind. future future <laughs> character progression. Let's go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, for now, I think I'm gonna go with moving target though. Okay. Uh, All right, which so, then yeah. does push me up to eleven. It does also push you into eleven. So you yeah. also have that that other mm -hmm. level. Okay. Um, also, I don't think you can adjust your dodge, so we'll have to note that so that we can put it in. When we put it into the actual character sheet, we'll note the correct number. Okay. Um, what is your dodge currently? Uh, it's 10. 10.5, but 10. No, no, your dodge. Oh, my sorry. dodge. Sorry. Uh, my dodge is 45. So it be it will become 50. So that's just what we need to note. I think I'm going to take the mutation. Okay. All right. So your options for the mutation are gills, 
Uh, you can't you can't drown if you get submerged. Uh, not that water is that prevalent. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it is a thing. You might run into an underground lake and then you can swim in it and be fine. Uh, premonition, that thing where you get to take defensive actions and you can't be attacked uh, with surprise. You can't be surprised. You can be attacked. You just can't be surprised. Uh, big brain, gain 10 to your intelligence. Claws, your unarmed attack damage is average and you have proficiency in blades because your hands are blades. Um, reptilian skin, uh, your daily requirement for water is decreased by one. Telepathy, you can send and receive mental messages or images over short range. Um, fish eyes, you don't suffer from disadvantage when in the dark. Mm. polyglot you have a not for knack for languages and jargons and can pick them up quickly thus gaining you advantage on charm skill rolls uh reflexes you uh your dodge is increased by 10 and then tail you, these are the options that i have for tail you gain advantage on the athletic skill roll because you have a tail which helps you you know balance and do climbing things um but these are just the options if you had another thing in mind, please share it. Um, I okay. I'm I'm drawn to fish eyes, and the dodge one. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Think. I think I'll do fish eyes. Okay. So you're gonna have bigger bulbous eyes. Yeah. But that also allows you to see in the dark. Okay. That feels like a thing that a family of <clears throat> monster hunters would evolve to have. Maybe there were some deep ones back in the history, but now that there's no more water, there's no more deep ones, and therefore you just yeah. have to trust. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you describe uh, uh did you um describe fortitude again what was that one the strong fortitude uh your mm -hmm. resilience rolls are always at advantage uh, hmm. yeah let's do that uh, strong okay. fortitude strong fortitude so whenever you i call for a resilience roll uh you can have advantage on it you can remind me that you have advantage on it too so just make sure that you do that uh advantage rolling now that we're talking about this sort of thing we've actually reached the end of the special abilities and we're just going to get into gear which is like the boring side um when you go to make a roll it's a d100 roll and then like i was saying to you guys before and then i'm now telling everyone you're going to make a d100 percentile we're only going to try to get below the stat number that is that stat if you have advantage or disadvantage, you'll roll an additional tens die. With advantage, you would choose the lower of the tens numbers. And with disadvantage, you would choose the higher of the tens numbers. And so that would determine whether or not you succeeded or failed. Um, so having advantage on resilience rolls means that every time you're going to roll with that additional tens and choose the lowest possible option between your two options there. So what is your resilience? Ronald, what was what was your resilience? Oh, uh, let's see. My resilience is do, 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 uh, 52. 52. Uh, yeah. So with with the advantage, you have a higher, a, a much higher chance of succeeding basically every time that you make that roll. So cool. That's a good one. OK, so now we get into gear. This is the boring part of character creation where you look over a giant list and you see gear. Oh, actually, there is an option, and I forgot to mention it. You do have an option to take on a negative trait if you so think that your character has one. There are many different options. Effectively, mechanically, there are things that they do. They usually grant you disadvantage to something, um, but then they grant you... What, what they do do, though, on the other side is that they grant you another skill or increase a skill proficiency in something. So you can use those... Like, okay, my character has body odor. They smell really bad, which causes some problems whenever they're working with people or charm things or whatever. But I also then, then have, uh, you know, proficiency in this skill that I wanted that I don't have access to right at the moment um, and that kind of thing. Um, so they, there's some options. There's like body odor, bad volume control, uh, increased thirst, like you drink, you have to drink more water. Um, maybe you're, Maybe there's a limp. Uh, nightmares, post-traumatic stress, scarred, sickly, small bladder. These are the kinds of things that are like thrown on there in the list. Um, just these negative traits that would like essentially grant you disadvantage. Or in the case of like small bladder, you 
and and like the increased drinking you have to like drink more water to survive each day um that kind of thing so that's like that's how they work what does the nightmares one? your character suffers from horrific nightmares and and whenever you sleep you have to make a resolve roll to stay asleep um if you fail <laughs> then you wake up and you can't re continue sleeping for the rest of the night You're never asleep. mind that's too <laughs> Too close to reality. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, eh, never mind, never mind, never mind. I don't want to play myself. Not the nightmares, uh, just the sleep stuff. Like, nah, yeah. no. Yeah, I don't want to be woke up, be awake constantly. No. <laughs> yeah. I get it. Um, this is these are totally, totally optional. They're just things that, like, if you want to have a quirk for your character and then gain a skill proficiency, that's kind of the the thing that they are. Um, yeah. Uh, but then. If anyone does, anyone have or is anyone entertaining any of them? If not, we'll just skip over to gear. I think I'm cool. okay. Saw so some shaking heads, so we'll just move on. Uh, I just want to make sure that it was thrown in there in case you were interested in that sort of thing. It sounded like there was a little bit of an entertainment of it, but then we we yeah. decided to forget it. Mm. Okay, so when you come to your character um, with your with your gear there's the the fast way and then there's the really long boring way and I, it's not really boring it's just the like more tailored way so the first way is to use a trail bag where you essentially get to, you will make three options and those will determine the stuff that you have and then you have some points to spend on some extra things um but then there's the other side which is just the free choice method method where you just have a certain number of gear points essentially and you just go into the gear inventory on the back of the book and just start selecting the things you want until eventually you run out of those points um it's not it's like like i said it's not the boring way it's just the, like the longer way because you have to look through the entire list of gear to figure out what you have um the trail bags is what i think what we're going to do here because it's just that much faster um but you're essentially going to choose your armor your weapons and your bag full of stuff Right. And then and then we'll and then we'll work out any extra bits that you might have after that. So for your armor options, your options, there are four options. One, uh, but it, it really doesn't matter. Uh, one option is iron bullet mail. One option is tin bullet mail and hat. One option is trench coat and gloves and thick. And the final option is thick padded clothes, gloves and hat. The reason why I said it doesn't matter is they all come out to six armor points, no matter how you cut it. So the real question is, do you want to have like a. Uh, uh, a Clint Eastwood style plate chest plate thing that you wear under your poncho or whatnot? Or do you want to have like typical trench coat and hat thing? Or do you want to have like some thick clothes and like gloves and that kind of stuff? So it's sort of the question of how do you want your armor to work out, but essentially it comes out to six total armor in the end. So uh, it's iron, once again, it's iron bullet mail, which is like chain mail, but built for bullets. Tin bullet mail, which is the same thing, but weaker quality, and a hat, a trench coat and gloves, or thick padded glo clothes, gloves, and a hat. Go on that trench coat and gloves life. Okay, trench coat and gloves life. Uh, thick padded, uh, thick padded um, clothes and a hat. Is that that what that one was? Hey, thick padded clothes, gloves, and a hat. So you get gloves yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, I'll I'll do that. Uh, I think he would want to look like an adventurer. Like he bought it. Sure. It's all very nice and like relatively new, but it's not used. <laughs> well, sadly, I think we're gonna have to uh, yeah. do a lot of this. Uh, do the the yeah, last yeah, little bit, bit of this offline. Sure. No, that's fun. Out of time. But thank you so much okay. for running us through cool. all of this. This yeah, was I'm... incredibly helpful. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, we'll I'll just throw the gear at you guys because this is the boring thing where you just kind of go through the gear list. So I'll throw it at you later and we can work through that. But uh, I appreciate going through all of this stuff with me. I'm super excited to play with these characters. Yeah. Yes, uh, it's fun. So this has been uh, the first episode of our our. our uh, our uh, the few and the curse uh, uh, actual play uh, next week we will start with the actual game and the mm -hmm. adventure uh, part one and two of of that starts next mm -hmm. week the same same bat channel same bat time uh, but once more uh, go around just quickly and tell people where you can find you uh, start with Scott uh, you can find me at heroicsusegaming.com or like everywhere that you just look up like maximum apocalypse or few and curse you'll find me um usually somewhere nearby 
Okay. Uh, Eliza. 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 I was, I, I'm always like, it's the other one. And then my brain's oh my like, God. nope. Post it note, man. Post it note. I d I'm dyslexic. Every time I read it, it's wrong. <laughs> Think of pizza. That's what I tell people. Pizza, Elisa. Uh, yeah, you can find me at Elisa Pearl on Twitter and Instagram, A L I Z A. Uh, Randy. Hey, uh, Randy Alvarenga. You can find me on Twitter at Roller Raja. That's R O L L E R R A J A. And Ronald. Uh, uh, you can find me at DJ Regular on all the socials um, and itch.io where you can find my games. Um, and yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, thank you all so much for, for tuning in, checking this out. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, the Kickstarter is live right now for this game if you want to back it and, and enjoy it. Uh, and we'll be going for a little while. Uh, and we'll be back here next week with uh, some actual gameplay. And, and we get to finally put these characters to the test. But thank you all so much for tuning in and hanging out with you. Good night, everybody. Night. Bye. <laughs>